after recording two of my longest reviews back to back on the same day after a week of almost non-stop video making, I decided to give myself a little break. After all, by this point, I was only just uploading my review of the arc. Yes, I was that far ahead of schedule. I just took a week to relax, watch a couple of seasons of Star Wars The Clone Wars, catch up on Stranger Things, all while assuming that when I did return to Doctor Who, it would be a slow, not exciting story about Scotland or something. Instead, what I got was a pleasant surprise keeping up the excellent quality of this here fourth season. Why is it so cold and dark today? The Highlanders is another four-part serial that aired on UK TVs right at the tail end of 1966, leading them into a new year. It's the fourth serial of the fourth season, and the second serial of the second Doctor. It's also completely missing from the archives, meaning I had to utilise alternate methods of watching this serial, yet again, another reason why I was a bit apprehensive to return from my wee break. It had a lot to live up to after the stellar first Doctor farewell, the tenth planet, and the epic second Doctor debut, the power of the Daleks. Thankfully, it continued the streak of great storytelling, compelling characters, and exciting action. Like I said, I once again had to use the website Dailymotion to watch a reconstruction of this story. Yeah, there was like a fan-made cartoon edit up on YouTube, but I'm not really too keen on that style. This time there were actually three variations of a Telesnap recreation. The first was an incomplete VHS quality version, which despite boasting the best quality pictures or screen stills, was still way too crusty for me. Second was the usual still image version with occasional narrative text to fill in the blanks, which I assume is the work of Loose Cannon's 1999 reconstruction. But then there was the third option, identical to the second, but with actual voiceover narration on top of the on-screen text. Because of the professional quality of the voiceover and the fact that it wasn't constantly talking over scenes, only filling in unseen details and quiet moments. I actually really preferred this version. It was kind of like watching along to an audiobook. I really wish other stories had this option, and I think it would have made for a far better time. If you're keen to give this story a watch, that's the version I recommend, and I don't normally do this, but I'll even link it below to make it easier for you. So, how's about we talk about the story, shall we? I'll admit, it was my fault for judging a book by its cover, or rather, a story by its title. After all, how exciting can something simply called The Highlanders possibly be? Well, it kicks off in the midst of a war. The Battle of Culloden... C Culloden... C uh, 1746 to be exact. With the Doctor providing the funniest TARDIS landing so far. The TARDIS materialises in an overgrown field. And moments after stepping out the front door, WHAM! A cannonball crashes into a nearby tree, causing the Doctor to swiftly respond... Well, that's enough of that. Then he quickly turns around and goes to leave. <laughs> Funny the seventh Doctor had that chance. The Doctor, Ben and Polly get embroiled in this conflict between the local Highlanders and the invading English. A bit awkward considering that Ben and Polly have thick English accents, so neither side is particularly keen on them. The Scotsmen viewing them as invaders, and the English assuming that they're just deserters. The Doctor, on the other hand, decides to randomly pull out this bizarre French-German hybrid accent to confuse everyone and just assumes the role of a German doctor who's been sent here to do something for some reason for the entire runtime. I don't know, I was starting to get a tad confused when so many different groups and factions were getting introduced around the same time. The Scottish in their hierarchy, the English military with their soldiers, generals, lieutenants, traitors, and pirate. Yeah, there's a pirate in this story that is ten times as piratey as all the pirates and the smugglers put together. In fact, it often felt like I was watching a better version of the smugglers, with more purpose to characters' actions and clear motivations and ambitions given to important players in this twisted game. Yeah, the confusion kind of wore off by episode two, where you kind of get the gist of who the main players are, or who the more notable characters are. I enjoyed seeing how Ben and Polly acted while separated from each other and the Doctor, all working hard to reunite somehow. This also leads to another successful example of multiple diverging stories weaving together to create a greater narrative that is probably the most understated genius of these episodes. I don't know if it's like best of classic Who material, but I can't really think of anything worth complaining about. 
Not even any nitpicks this time, thanks to the voiceover narration keeping the viewer fully informed. Whether it's escaping prisoners, outwitting military officials, or blackmailing guards, each character gets their time to shine. Although one character, who was always in the background and almost never the focus, was newcomer Jamie McCrimmon. Now any classic Doctor Who fan knows Jamie to be the second Doctor's most prominent companion, and one of the most iconic of the entire series. So I was surprised when in his debut story, he really wasn't given anything prominent to do, mostly being used as a glorified extra. Of course, this all makes perfect sense when you know the behind the scenes story. I love this little tidbit of information. So it turns out the actor Fraser Hines was only meant to be a one-off character in this one serial, but because a writer and producer enjoyed his performance so much, he was offered an extended contract as a mainstay TARDIS companion. From there, he went on to become a fan favourite, returning several times in anniversary specials, numerous audio dramas, and eventually was the second longest running TARDIS companion behind the Fifth Doctor's Tegan. Well, despite his limited screen time here, I can already tell I'm going to enjoy his addition to the cast, even if only for his sweet Scottish accent. David Tennant, read me a bedtime story. Uh, alright. Elephant in the room. While writing my script for this episode, I thought to myself, this is definitely a real-world historical tale. But I distinctly remember reading on the Wikipedia page of The Smugglers that that one was supposed to be the last actual historical tale until The Fifth Doctor's Black Orchid. I have no idea how I got that so wrong, but when I rechecked, there was nothing of the sort on The Smugglers page. And yet that exact thing I read was on the Wikipedia page for The Highlanders. I don't know how I managed to screw that one up so bad, but it's not like I could go back in time and fix it. Or is there? If there's one thing I've learned from reading modern Doctor Who books, it's that the sonic screwdriver can pretty much do anything. Alrighty, here goes nothing. And we're back! <laughs> what a trip! Hope I didn't disrupt my own timeline or anything. Oh, I should have probably warned Sam to not go and watch every Patrick Troughton episode. Oh well. Come to think of it, I don't think anyone really cares if I get stuff wrong. But just in case you do, I'm very sorry. Check the comments and Andrew Bowman will always be sure to fact check for me. Right, now that all the wibbly wobblies out of the way, we've reached the end of the review. The Highlanders was a nice surprise and one that I will gladly recommend. There's a couple of iconic moments in this one, like where the Doctor disguises himself as an old woman in order to work in a kitchen and sneak around guards, and where Polly remarks, Oh, you'd look good in a dress! To which the Doctor gleefully responds, Eh, hey, you think so? Well, one day, the Doctor just might. I don't know, I haven't seen past season 9. Does Jodie Whittaker's Doctor wear a dress at some point? Uh, doesn't matter, not important. Anyway, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's it. Unless there are any other timeless moments in these episodes. Give us your word that you'll not molest us. What?! On that note, let's call it a day, shall we? Special shout out to any newcomers from the Doctor Who New Zealand Facebook group. Pleasure to have you on board. Tune in next week when we take a look at the Underwater Menace DVD. I've heard good things. Oh gosh, have a good day.